at this very second you err on a narrow ledge between life and death you probably don't feel it but there's an incredible amount of activity going on inside you and this activity can never stop picture yourself as a slinky falling down an escalator moving upwards the falling part represents the self-replicating processes of your cells the escalator represents the laws of physics driving you forwards to be alive is to be in motion but never arriving anywhere if you reach the top of the escalator there's no more falling possible and you are dead forever somewhat unsettlingly the universe wants you to reach the top how do you avoid that and why are you alive all life is based on the cell a cell is a piece of the dead universe that separated itself from the rest so it could do its own thing for a while when this separation breaks down it dees and joins the rest of the dead universe again unfortunately the universe would like for life to be done with doing its own thing for some reason it's not a fan of exciting things but trees to be as boring as possible we call this principle entropy and it's a fundamental rule of our universe it's pretty complicated and counterintuitive so we'll explain it in detail in another video for now all you need to know is living things are inherently exciting a cell is filled up with millions of proteins and millions more simpler molecules like water thousands of complex self-replicating processes are happening up to hundreds of thousands oft times every second to stay alive and exciting it has to constantly work to keep itself from achieving entropy and becoming boring and dead the cell has to maintain the separation from the rest of the universe it's doing this for example by keeping the concentration of certain molecules different on the inside and the outside by actively pumping out excess molecules to do stuff like this a cell needs energy energy is the ability of things in the universe to do work to move or manipulate a thing to create change this ability cannot be created or destroyed the set amount of energy in the universe will never change we don't to know why it just is that way so billions of years ago one of the most crucial challenges for the first living beings was to get usable energy we don't to know a lot about the first cells except that they got their energy from simple chemical reactions and they found the ultimate energy transfer system the energetic building block of life the molecule adenosine triphosphate or at its structure makes it uniquely good at accepting and releasing energy when a cell needs energy for example to pump out molecules or to repair a broken macro machine it can break down it and use the chemical energy to do work and create change this is why living beings are able to do stuff we don't to know when or how exactly the first app molecule was made on earth but every living thing we know uses app or something very similar to keep its internal machinery running it's crucial for almost every process plants fungi bacteria and animals need to survive without app no life on earth possibly anywhere while breaking down chemicals for energy is nice and all early life did miss out on the bios bioli greatest available source of energy the sun the sun merges atoms and radiates photons away that carry energy into the solar system but this energy is raw and indigestible it needs to be refined after hundreds of millions of years of evolution finally a cell figured out how to eat the, the sun it absorbed radiation and converted much of it into neat little chemical packages that it could use to stay alive we call this process photosynthesis you take photons that are wobbly with electromagnetic energy and use a part of this energy to merge 
and combine different molecules together. The electromagnetic energy is converted into chemical energy stored in the at molecule. This process became even better as some cells learned to create better chemical packages. Glucose or sugar, easy to break down, high in energy, and pretty tasty. This is so convenient that some cells decided that instead of doing all that pesky photosynthesis work themselves, they would just swallow other cells that did and take their glucose and act. This is widely considered one of the biggest anime betrayals in evolutionary history. And so things went on. Photosynthesizing cells could mostly harness energy at their surfaces, which limited their maximum energy production, which limited their evolutionary avenues somewhat. So time passed. Some cells made sugar, others ate to them. Some did its thing. But overall, things stayed pretty much the same for hundreds of millions of years. Until one day, a cell ate another and did not kill it. Instead, they became one cell. Nothing had changed that day, but Earth would be different forever. This cell became the ancestor of all animals on this planet. Blue whales, amoeba, dinosaurs, jellyfish, pink fairy armadillos, and sundacologos. And, of course, you. All can trace back their existence to this moment. The merging of two living beings is so important because when those two cells became one, they became way more powerful. The formerly independent cell in the inside could stop trying to survive. It could concentrate on one thing, make app. It became the powerhouse of the cell, the first mitochondria. The host cell's job became to ensure survival in the dangerous world and provided the mitochondria with food. Mitochondria basically reverse photosynthesis in a similarly complex process. They take sugar molecules that we got from eating other living things, combust them with oxygen and precursor molecules to make new, energy-rich at molecules. This process works like atony furnace and spits out waste products like kato water and a little bit of kinetic energy that you experience as body heat. This first division of labor meant the new cell had way more energy available than any cell before, which meant more possibilities for evolution to enable more complex cells. At some point, these cells began to form small groups or communities, which led to multicellular life and finally to you. Today, you are a pile of trillions of cells, each filled with dozens if not hundreds of little machines that provide you with usable energy to stay alive. If this process is interrupted, even for a few minutes, you'd eat. But if life is so fragile, wouldn't it be a good idea to store it, like we store sugar in our fat cells so we don't to die if we stop breathing for a while? If life has solved so many problems to make you live today, what's up with the dying? Quickly thing. Even simple bacteria like e. Kali make about 50 times their body weight in act for every cell division. Your trillions of cells need a lot of fat to keep you around. Every day, your body produces and converts about 90 million, billion, billion molecules of act about your own body weight. You need a whole person's worth of fat just to make it through a single day. Even storing enough act to last you a few minutes is basically impossible. An at molecule is really good for, for shifting energy around quickly, but it's terrible for storage since it has only one of a glucose molecule's energy at three times its mass. So at constantly produced and used up fairly quickly. This was the short and simplified story of the molecule that allows you to be different from the dead universe and to be the slinky on the escalator. It is a weird story. There is this molecule you need to survive at all times. 
you need it to keep moving because even a short break brings your slinky to a stop and you need to make it yourself it's like driving a car at full speed while producing fuel in the trunk with junk that you pick up from the side of the road as far as we know this all began billions of years ago when tiny parts of the dead universe came together and became something else for a moment it could keep itself going it could grow that moment set the slinky in motion and it's been going ever since from the very first cells to you watching this now at some point you will merge with the rest of the dead universe again maybe you all tell it stories about your adventures maybe not but before you find out you get to do what life does best making a dead universe much more interesting if you are currently bored for whatever reason and you want to make your life more interesting we've got something for you we partnered with skillshare an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for all skill levels on tens of creative skills like illustration animation cooking creative writing or film and video learning something while creating stuff for yourself is pretty fun and fulfilling if you want to learn animation we made a few skillshare classes where we explained how we animated scenes from our videos with video lessons and hands-on projects you can get unlimited access to all classes for less than ten dollars a month with an annual premium membership and the first one thousand Kurzgesagt viewers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial and if you read just getting started for beginners who want to do to into illustrations similar to ours we recommend vector illustration using creative constraints to find your style by rick berkelsman just try something to improve your skills and at the same time fight the boredom of being stuck inside if you want to get creative with new skills and support curse act give it a tree